All right, how is it going, everybody? Uh, today we're gonna be doing a movie review of the My Hero Academia World Heroes mission. This is the third theatrical release for uh, My Hero Academia. Uh, I have seen the other two. I was this is the first time I've actually been part of the My Hero Academia fandom that a movie came out. Uh, I remember my friends going all going to go see Heroes Rising, and everyone was super excited about it. Everyone loved Heroes Rising. Um, I don't remember much of it. I do have it on Blu-ray, and I also have seen um, the first movie. I think it's called Two Heroes. Um, but I think that of all three of them, I think World Heroes Mission is probably my favorite. Um, just uh, I'm going to go over like some very basic stuff in the beginning, and then we're going to head into some more spoilery content as the video goes on. Um, it's not like a very comprehensive review since I just saw the movie. I'm just like... I don't really have time to like formulate my thoughts. I just had some quick ones that I wanted to just get out there, kind of. Um, but starting with uh, visuals, I guess. Um, Studio Bones did a really, really good job. A majority of the movie looks really, really great. There's some parts in here that I feel like could look better. But I think overall, World Heroes Mission looked really, really good. There is quite a bit of like action scenes that happen throughout the movie and I think some interesting shots that they tried to take with like um, camera perspectives and like um, like some very uh, Hollywood style camera angles I would say and camera movements that I think um, were a bit experimental and I appreciate the effort some of them did not pan out quite as well as I hoped they would but um, I've never I mean um, I I haven't seen much um, in terms of like um, um, movies for anime. You know what I mean? Because like you will get like you get like anime movies with like you know like of course everybody knows like Studio Ghibli and you have stuff like the Satoshi Kon, um, just like interesting camera angles and stuff like that. Dynamic um, camera movements of very like standalone stories. But in terms of like properties that is like an anime and like a, a a manga like a weekly manga getting a, an entirely original story adapted as a movie um it kind of i kind of put those in a separate category right in between your in between your serialized seasonal tv episodes you have the anime um movie adaptations or rather like whatever um original story for an anime and then you have like the movie specific um japanese anime stuff like Spirited Away or Perfect Blue or Akira, right? That type of stuff. Um, but I think that it fits pretty well in that middle category where um, it's not the best looking thing you're going to see as far as anime wise and, you know, like as a movie, but it's also absolutely not the worst thing. I think the, I think the fact that they went ahead and tried all sorts of crazy stuff with the visuals um, worked really, really good. Um, I think pacing... Uh, Again, some slight hiccups here and there, but I think um, I think that we got to know all the characters' motivations um, pretty easily. You know, I think um, the characters that did get introduced in the movie, um, you kind of get to know what they're fighting for and you know why they're on whichever side. You know, um, at least the main, at least the central characters, right? There's a couple of side characters that get introduced, um, and you kind of just get a gist of what they're about. Um, they're actually, uh, we got these when we first entered the movie, Ooh, when we first entered the movie theater. Sorry if that sounds weird on the camera, sorry, on the mic. But we got these little, um, special, uh, I don't know what to call it, like little pocket books, I guess. Um, it has, uh, basically a summary of the show. Um, also it, it warns you not to read this until after you've seen the movie. I think the very first thing. Oh no, I think, weirdly enough, it's in the very, very back. There's like a nice picture of Deku here, and there's like a little text bubble there that says, Hey, don't... It's weird because it's, it's at the very end, but it's like, Hey, don't read this if you haven't watched the movie yet. Um, but it also has... Oh, never mind, it's right here. Very, very front page. Don't... It says it has spoilers in it. But um, it, just has some, it just has some character sheets... Um, I'm just gonna show you the first few pages because there's like no spoilers in it, but like some character sketches of um, the main trio and their like stealth suit outfits, which as you can see right up here. 
I really like the designs of these um, stealth suits, and I'll go more into that later. I especially love Bakugo's outfit. I wish that would be his, like, main outfit, honestly. Um, but yeah, um, going back to what I was saying, um, you do get to get well acquainted with all the characters that get introduced in the in the movie. Um, again, some side characters, that's what I mentioned. That's why I mentioned that. Um, some of the side characters also appear in here. Um, some supplementary knowledge you could get from that notebook, which I think is pretty fascinating. And I think that uh, it's nice as a little collectible, I guess, if you, for watching the movie in theaters. Um, but pacing wise, uh, I think, again, like some some hiccups here and there. But I think overall, I was pretty engaged with what was what was going on. It's it's not the most complicated story. Um, once it gets going, it just it just gets just keeps going. Um, there's not necessarily a lull in the story where you kind of start dozing off and droning on. Um, I think that uh, in terms of like ramping up and escalating, I think it does a pretty good job at that until the very, very end where it all like, you know, you, need to, you, you get the rising tension, you get the denouement, right? Um, I, think, I think it's really good when, once, it hit the cli once it hits the climax, it starts like slowing down appropriately. I think overall it's a pretty decently paced film. Um, it could do some better like fleshing out here and there but with a runtime of um i i don't know i don't actually know maybe around two hours and change right i don't actually know the time off the top of my head but it we were there for um we were there for at least um i want to say two and a half hours maybe two hours and 15 minutes um but for that long i think that um they did it they did about as well as they could at least for this kind of story um, if they were to tell a different story, maybe, um, you know, I would make some changes. But again, that would be going into some more spoiler territory. But um, just to give my overall impressions of it, I really liked it. As someone that has, like, just recently gotten into the My Hero Academia fandom, um, completely bought in, by the way. Um, uh, I knew that from a really, really long time ago... To, to, I knew from a really, really long time ago that I was going to like this uh, this series, and uh, it's just so fun. It doesn't take itself extremely seriously, um, but, this, but the message that it does try to carry forward is um, one that I can 100% get behind. Some of my favorite shows have, like, um, the same level of, like, hopefulness. Like, Gurren Lagann is probably at the top of that list, but just that, that fighting spirit that drives you forward, you know, like... Um, I think it's I think it's really really good like the music and the visuals has always been something that I've always been enamored with I just never got into the series because of one reason or another but now that I'm in it um I'm happy to say that it's been it's it's still consistently like a really really good show there's some dips here and there I guess not consistently if I'm saying that right but I think that overall um I still really like it and I'm really glad that it's as big as it is now that um I get to see more and more of it over time, you know, and I'm hoping that they get a chance to make another movie um, in a few years with a different story, um, and we'll see how they do from there. Um, but now I want to talk into some more um, spoilery details, I guess, in terms of what I was talking about. Um, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, go ahead and stop the video, go ahead and watch it. If you're a My Hero Academia fan, honestly, go ahead and watch it. Um, it's available on Crunchyroll as well if you can't get uh, seats in the theater. But if you can't get se seats in the theater, it does this. There is this little thingy. I don't know if they give this out at every um, movie theater, um, but I thought personally, I thought this was really neat. Um, but just from my own movie going experience, this was part of it. I also got this cool T-shirt from Cinemark. I mean, I had to buy it, but it's a really nice design shirt. I don't know if you're. I don't know if you're. Movie theater will sell it, but I just, it's just part of my shit. But, um, I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, on to some more spoilery topics. Um, starting off with, um, the visual spectacle. Um, I mentioned how they were trying to go for some, some more Hollywood style camera angles and stuff like that. Um, it kind of doesn't work well if the, entire budget of your movie is stretched out over the course of the movie i feel like if they focus all the budget of the movie into this one little scene it would have looked so much better there's a part 
in the middle of the movie where they do this fight where it's this supposed to be this like one continuous shot and it looks so cool but um the the background it's just so boring um it just needed more it just needed more frames in between because it just looked way too choppy i guess um it it doesn't look it didn't look quite as like um great as it could have been um if you're moving the camera that fast but like the images are moving that slow um it just kind of ends up looking a bit like a slideshow at least to me and um that part felt like distracting me like like it, it brought me out right like um uh, i was just watching the movie and especially because the the scene that preceded that had some pretty decent animation and the scene that happened right after that was also like had some uh pretty decent animation to it so just that one big fight scene with the really really interesting camera angles which i really really liked um could have used some of that budget from before and after that scene considering that before and after it was just like mostly just people talking and like people's hair flapping in the wind you know it just the the offset of that just felt a little bit weird to me um but going back to visuals um i keep pulling this out and it's because it has them in their stealth outfits. If you know, if you were aware of anything about this movie being advertised, World Heroes Mission, they kept showing off, oh, look at Deku, look at Bakugo, look at Todoroki in their new stealth outfits. Look at how cool. I, I again, I love Bakugo's outfit. I love that they changed his grenade hands to something more like kind of stealthy looking. Um, they look like smoke grenades, actually, now that I think about it. Um, I don't know what kind of grenades they are supposed to be, but they kind of look like smoke grenades to me. And I love that little detail. We don't even see these suits for more than like five minutes. It's crazy. Um, I wish they had shown these off more often. Um, the only thing I knew about this movie before coming in was that Deku was being framed for um, being a villain, like number one villain. And um, I was kind of curious as to the events that would lead up to that. Um, after having watched the movie, it feels pretty apparent. Like, oh, okay, that's why. But they made it sound like way worse than it actually was i feel like um i feel like uh there there could have been a little bit more to it um but it, it made it sound like he was a like public enemy number one in the world and that deku was in hiding and they're trying to figure out why i think that um i think that um i kind of understand what they were going for but um yeah, I, I I don't know if I don't know if I should say much more on that, but um, it was an interesting concept, and one that's uh very, one one that I understand what, I I don't know how to say it without like actually like spoiling shit, you know, so you know what I'll have another post spoiler discussion, just for this specific aspect of the story right at the very end of the video, but moving on, um, pacing wise. Uh, again, I thought that it was, um, I, I thought that it was pretty decent. Uh, again, it had some issues here and there, mostly to do with the fact that, um, again, right at the beginning, the, the, the initial, not the central conflict, but the initial, like, starting off point of, like, Deku getting framed for, like, um, murder and stuff like that, um, felt a little bit like that needed to be fleshed out. The overall um, plot of the movie, I feel like, was pretty well established. Like you see it from the beginning of the movie all the way to the, all the way to the very end, so that when the movie ends with that thing um, breaking down and, and like getting taken care of, you're not that surprised. I will say though that whenever you do a story where it's the end of the world, all the tension kind of goes away. Um, it kind of felt like um, Infinity War, like a uh, Avengers Infinity War, where you know it's Infinity War and then there's Endgame, and you know it's gonna be a two-parter. But um, when you finish Infinity War and then like the cast that gets dusted over, is stuff, it are, are cast members of movies that have sequels that were announced like a week before Infinity War came out. All the tension of that scene just kind of goes away, right? I remember they had like some sort of like Disney meeting of like, oh yeah, we're gonna have Black Panther too, we're gonna have Spider Man too, and then we're gonna have um, Wanda Vision starring uh, Wanda and the Vision and stuff like that. And then I think like the week after Infinity War comes out, and then like everybody gets dusted, right? It's it it's like it's like 
crazy at first because it's like surprising but then you're like well they're gonna have to bring him back because then who's gonna be in spider-man homecoming like a few months from now right or is it gonna be a prequel who knows um i still think they should have put some fake movies <laughs> in there just to fuck with people but but it's stuff like that right when the threat is so large and you know for a fact that it can't last um it doesn't it doesn't quite hit the emotional stride uh it doesn't quite hit the the same level of emotion that you wanted to if the threat was centralized to one little city like most of the movie takes place in a place called Othion. i don't exactly i don't exactly know where that is it looks like some place in spain maybe because of all the of all the spanish i think that i read or at least italian um, but somewhere in europe i think maybe greece that sounds like a greek place i don't know it sounds like sounds like pantheon whenever i whenever i read it um but otheon um, most of the movie takes place in that area and i feel like if the threat was centralized just to that one location specifically and whatever central conflict was just going to affect that one little city itself um the stakes would have felt a bit more grave because there's the chance that the heroes could fuck up right because once it starts affecting the entire world right there's no way that the writers of the movie would let that happen and you know that a mile away from watching the movie right so coming into it when i found out like you know when i as soon as you find out that the threat is like worldwide all that tension kind of gets released because there's no more tension of like oh well i know they're gonna succeed right whereas if it was just centralized to this one area there's a way for the movie to end conclude in a way where everybody fucks up but nobody gets hurt but um there's still like a consequence to it um i I can't talk about anything without spoiling something else completely out of context but um (laughs) um i i don't even want to touch that i guess i guess i'll just put like a little spoiler warning um in the in the comment section for um for like the demon slayer movie where the way that that movie ends um the conflict gets resolved in such a way that um they won but with like three sets of quotation marks around the word won right like they 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 saved the day right they sure resolved the conflict but that had consequences to it I guess is what all all that I'm saying, right? Um, But because because that entire Demon Slayer movie takes place just on that one train, right? Um, It's entirely plausible for that movie to end with everybody just fucking up, right? But also still driving the story forward. I guess because also this is its own story that has to balloon up and then pop at the end right it can't it has to like arc back around to the exact same spot right where they left off in the manga because this isn't a real story uh, in the sense that it's not necessarily part of the continuity like you could totally skip this movie and be perfectly fine whereas demon slayer mugen train is literally the next arc as soon as season one ended right so there's a difference there where they had the chance to like drive the story forward whereas here um they have to like um begin the story and then introduce all these characters and then they have to conclude the story and this uh, like the introduce the characters like b- they basically forget about them right like every naruto movie like naruto goes into some mysterious town meets some random kid fights off the local bully and then leaves right um i think i think the larger the i think if the conflict had stayed within this area it would have felt more the gravity of it would have felt more heavy as opposed to now it's ballooned out into the world well there's no way the villain's gonna win there's no possible way because then what are you gonna do about the actual villain of the actual series right um but that was my one issue with it i'm kind of disregarding that though or not necessarily disregarding it but kind of just looking at it from the perspective of it's a it's just supposed to be like its own thing um i think that the way they got to the end of the the way they got to the end of that um arc um, I think it was pretty satisfying. I think that the story kept me engaged um, relatively well throughout the whole thing. Um, 
uh, again, just just a few minor complaints here and there. Um, but I feel like, um, I feel like that's that's pretty much all I have to say, really, um, in terms of like the actual story itself. Again, I think that if you haven't seen the movie quite yet, first of all, why are you here in the spoiler section? But second of all, um, if you just enjoy My Hero Academia, this is just a really good My Hero Academia story. Um, I think again, just it it has the the conflict kind of ballooned up all the way to unnecessary proportions, but uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad story. It just means that um, I hope that the next conflict is a bit more centralized, right? Make it a smaller threat, so that way the threat of something small is much more real than a gun pointed at the entire Earth, I guess. Um, but that's all I have as far as that discussion goes. Uh, and the last bit of spoiler thing that I want to talk about, um, the reason why I didn't want to talk about then, um, that's it. That's all I have to say, by the way, if, that, if that's all that you're looking for, is my thoughts on the movie. But this last little bit is specific to the manga, where um, usually the movie that comes out has parallels to the anime that's going on right now. So with Heroes Rising, the parallel to that movie was um, was Kai Chisaki of, like, the, you know, the, the, the Yakuza and stuff like that, right? Um the threat that is being dealt with right now in the anime, I believe, is uh, Redestro and Detnorat and that stuff. The Liberation Army, the Meta Liberation Army. And so, of course, the main villain of this uh, movie is like this, uh, this zealot that is against quirks, but also has quirks themselves. Um, but I think that um, there's this one little comic, and I have to wrap this up soon because my phone's dying. Um, Actually, maybe I can fix that. Let's do this. Just just until I get my point across. There you go. Um, what I was going to say was that uh, there's this little comic strip that gets passed around all the time, and it's like this villain that's like, I am evil because I have no friends and no one loved me. And then the hero team with all their friends and love beat the shit out of the villain. And <laughs> it's a four-panel comic that basically ends the original point of the story, the original uh, point of the villain is never resolved, right? Um, that kind of happens with this movie also, right? This is, I think, one of a moment where I was assuming that Deku was going to develop the quirk ability of talk no jutsu, but he didn't. Um, he, he learned, he instead developed the quirk of Saitama, and that was crazy to me, but... Um, I think that uh, I think that was fine as like a spectacle. Um, again, like the visuals in this movie is just really, really good, except for that one cliffside fight. I thought that I, I, I understand what they were trying to go for, but I, it just did not hit me in the same way that I wanted it to. I could understand what they were going for though, and I appreciate the effort. But um, in terms of in terms of like making parallels story wise between the anime, that seems more apparent. But there's that little bit of the story what I thought they were make, make, trying to make a parallel with the manga. Because um, Deku being framed as like public enemy number one, and he's kind of, I kind of assumed that he was going to go off by himself, and the movie was going to be about Deku being on the run by himself. Um, kind of leads some parallel to what's going on in the manga right now. Um, at least... Um, as of a few issues ago, um, not the most recent issues, but um, but the last um, little bit, I don't know if I want to call it an arc, but the last little bit where um, Deku was just kind of off by himself, like after he left UA and just kind of went off on his own to take care of the threat and try to take care of the, th of the threat by himself, you know, kind of going his own way. I thought that's what the movie was going to be about. Um, and I feel like that story was really interesting when the, when they did it in the manga, and I was kind of uh, interested to see if that's what the parallel was gonna be for the movie, but uh, not quite so. To be fair, it would have been a lot to unpack between that and between establishing the villain and establishing the supporting main character. Um, 
that is like exclusive to this movie, which is um, Ruli. Uh, oh my God, I forgot his name already. Rudy? No, it's not. Hold on, I'll get it. Don't worry. Oh, there it is. Rody. Rody Soul. Um, but by the way, great character. Uh, he's pretty fun. He's pretty fun as a character. I like Rhodey. Um, very few, very few times will we get a character introduced to us that is actually like likable. He's pretty good. I like Rhodey. Um, I think, I think that th there's a chance for him to show up in a cameo role at some point in the future. Kind of like how, uh, kind of like how an aspect from one of the movies shows up in the manga later. But um, I just thought I'd point that out in this very end bit specifically because it's manga specific and not necessarily anime specific because this is this movie is really geared towards more for the anime watchers um, if you're caught up on the, on the anime this is this probably has more meaning to you because this is where the anime is right now right whereas with the manga like way fucking past that we're like at least we're at least a couple seasons away from this one right now um but uh those are those are everything that I have um thank you all so much for listening um that's all I have um catch me on my live streams at twitch.tv slash soamoto if you want to be notified of any future videos coming out um follow me on twitter at twitter.com slash um I'll leave links in the comment section below until then stay safe take care and peace out bye bye